Hey, hey, P-Square Squad. It is your girl, Prophetess Ray here, and I am back with another episode of the Pretty and Powerful Podcast. First of all, I just want to send you a big hug and some love for all of those who been faithfully listening, who've been watching the podcast, sharing the podcast. I really appreciate you all. Uh, This would be nothing if you weren't listening. I'd be talking to myself. So thank you for tuning in and thank you for spreading the word. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you are new to the Pretty and Powerful podcast, welcome, honey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, On this episode of the Pretty and Powerful podcast, we are talking about the topic, Arise Leading Ladies. Anybody who knows me knows that one of my life purposes is to push women into their rightful place in leadership, to encourage you, to let you know all that God has placed into you and help you birth those things. And so I have an anointed, a powerful, a wise woman of God here with me on today. Peace Square Squad, I want you to give a lovely welcome to Pastor Jessica Williams to the podcast. Give her a hey girl, hey. Hey, and welcome her to the podcast. Uh, Pastor Jessica is the executive pastor of All Nations Worship Assembly Huntsville. And we actually met as we were leaving Plan and Poor, which is the um, All Nations Collective Pastoral Retreat on last year. And ever since then, I've been following her and, and watching all of the amazing things that she has going on. And she pours out the books that she's producing. And so I thought that she would be the perfect person to reach out to about this topic of leadership because she's a young woman of color and she's doing a thing, okay? So I want you to welcome her to the podcast. Thank you, Pastor Jessica, for joining me on today. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Yes. So I let them know that you're the uh, executive pastor of All Nations Huntsville, but could you give them a little bit more background on yourself? Because I know you're also an entrepreneur. Yes, ma'am. Oh, goodness. (laughs) <laughs> um, I, I'm never prepared when people ask me that because it's a whole lot, right? So I'm a mom. Um, I have a son. He is nine, going on like 39 or something like that at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that is my pride and joy. Uh, out of everything that I do, I'm, I'm most honored to that God chose me for him. Yes. He's a real special kind of child. Um, and also, I am, like you said, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the CEO of Key Vision Publishing. Um, we're almost five years in the game, over 250 books published, and we're getting oh ready. Gosh. Yes, we are getting ready to launch our second international author in like a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, um, I do leadership. Leadership is my thing. I'm a developing leadership specialist. Uh, that's my strong suit uh, as an EP. Um, and I'm also an author. So I, I think I'm going to release another book probably in the next couple of weeks too. Yes. Oh my! I think goodness. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Where do you have the time, honey? I mean, you have so much going on, but that is really, really encouraging, and that's why I wanted you on here because one of the things that I always hear women say is, "I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that, <laughs> baby." Yes, you, you do. Time. You better you make time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. And, and so. Um, I'm sure that I know there are a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs on this podcast who listen to it, who would love to hear your story because then you used to be a teacher. Yes. I actually taught for like six years with Mm -hmm. um, Huntsville city schools and you know, when it came to publishing books and stuff like that, literature has always been my heart profit is read. Like since I was a little girl, like I started reading at like three years old. Um, My mom like always had me in the library and stuff. But the weird thing is, like, I had this guidance counselor when I was a senior, and I told her, like, hey, I want to do something with literature, journalism, writing, or something. But because I'm from a small town, it was so unheard of. She was like, I don't really know if you can do that. Like, you may just want to teach. Now, teaching yes. comes natural. It was crazy. And listen, you know how people do, like, when 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 they've never seen something or when they've never experienced it or you know, if they tried to go after their dreams and it, you, that's a, yes. that's a whole nother conversation yes, for another day. Yes, yes. But that, that's where, that's where it started. You know, like, um, 
So when I got to high, when I got to college and stuff like that, I would like edit papers for my classmates, like do little stuff like that. Because I had my son early. Like I had my son um, when I was a sophomore um, out here thinking I was grown. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to find a way to get some extra money. But anyway, fast forward, you know, six years later, I'm teaching. Um, people started bringing stuff to me to edit. And so I launched the editing company. We were doing like newspaper stuff. And then um, all of a sudden authors started coming. I'm like, where are these people coming from with these books? You know, um, I said, I might need to get a degree or something. So I went to Berkeley Institute online, got a copywriting degree and stuff like that. And um, probably like the next year after I started my editing company, um, people started coming to me asking me if I could publish their book. And I'm like, no, I, I don't do that. And I was like, you need to figure it out. And so that wow. was 2015. And here we are now. That's literally how it started. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And so you were in your early 20s. Ma'am, say it one more time. Well, you, you were in your early 20s. Yes. Starting this I was like 24. I was 24. Mm hmm Wow, <laughs> that is so amazing. But it really happened organically. So it was not really something is. that you were intentionally saying, hey, I'm going to leave teaching and start this business. But it, one thing led to another. Absolutely. It was like once I jumped out there as a business owner with the editing thing, it was like it was like that was God's like, OK, all right. I think you can handle this next part. You yeah. know, um, yeah. it was like I gave God a yes. And I also took a chance on myself. Mm -hmm. I think that if I had a tried to go with it the other way, I wouldn't have been as comfortable doing it. But it was like a smooth transition. I did not plan on becoming a publisher. Definitely didn't plan on leaving my job. I told, um, I met my pastor and I actually got saved around the same time. Um, and I told my pastor, um, I said, yeah, I'm going to be teaching until I'm like 40 or something. And he's like, girl, he said, you're going to, you're going to leave that job by next year. It's like, man, you crazy. You out, you out <laughs> mind. I ain't leave my job, be an entrepreneur, do stuff in ministry. Man, you crazy. I ain't doing that. Child, and, I, I can't be doing all that. <laughs> no, but the man of God was right. By May 2015, I was out of there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, do it. Like he will throw, yes. he will thrust you yes, into him. But you know, your obedience really positioned you because you, mm. you, you got your degree in copywriting. You were preparing, even though you didn't quite see it happening. Mm -hmm. You still were following the spirit almost unknowingly because mm -hmm. you were prepared when he thrusted you into that. Absolutely. And that is, that's really, that's really impactful. And that's really something that those who are listening need to understand how powerful it is to be spirit led, yes. even when you don't see the whole picture and you don't comprehend what, what God is taking you to. Mm -hmm. She was following God and she ended up right where she needed to be when God made that decision for her to shift <laughs> into entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we want to see the things manifest before we yeah. follow the spirit, but that's not truly faith. And Absolutely. I think that story is really encouraging to the power of faith. And so um, what advice would you give to a woman who is in a full-time job since, especially since this happened organically for you? <laughs> you know, you got some people out here, they like, honey, quit your job, Ooh. go dive into that business. What advice would you give to that woman who has a full-time job but also has a side hustle? I, would, I wouldn't I would give them that advice. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, even as she was talking, I was thinking, like, what, what advice would I give? And for me, it would be, like, look before you leap. Mm -hmm. Like, for real, for real. Like, look before you leap. I think a lot of these entrepreneurs now, um, they are all about, like, Oh, yeah, I want to be independent. I want to make my own schedule. I want that freedom. But freedom is expensive. Do you hear me? And I'm not talking about monetarily profit is free. I'm talking yeah. about in your discipline, in your focus. Like, you got to be self-motivated to be an entrepreneur. Like, yeah. I remember the day after I quit my job and waking up in the morning like, okay, what are we going to, like, what are wow. we doing? You know, and I was yeah. very unwise um, in leaving my job. I should have, I honestly think I could have, I could have balanced them both out at least one more year okay. um, and allowed my company to build the finance, the finances to not just support me, but to support itself too. And right. I think that's something a lot of people don't tell entrepreneurs, like 
just because the money is coming in and you can pay your bills with it, so to speak, right. there's a lot more that goes into a business. You got to think about the marketing. You got to think about if you if it grows so big, you might need extra hands. So you got to yes. think about employment, contracting, yes. like a lot of what a business owner see at the beginning um that money is not that that money even though you can use it to support yourself it really should be going back into the business absolutely you know what i'm saying absolutely. um and if somebody had told me that i would have waited a year um before i put that kind of responsibility on keen vision i made keen vision responsible for me way too soon wow yes. mm -hmm. that's good yeah that's and so good. it was very it, it strained my company early on um, I made a lot of fast decisions without thinking through them properly. So if I could encourage anyone, I would say, hey, make sure you look first. Make sure the business can sustain itself, sustain itself and you. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you do nothing else, like during this time, develop that discipline. It's very possible. And, and this going back to what you said earlier. People feel like they don't have time. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. If you would cut out some of the stuff that you should be doing. <laughs> that part. This your that podcast. Part. I'm not going to put that your viewers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta cut some of that stuff out that social media time hanging out with friends you know all things with balance but when you want something you got to make time for it yes absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely we make time for what we see as important whatever we prioritize we make time for it and so uh oh we i love that you said i forced king vision to support me too soon mm -hmm. wow that is powerful because I don't think, and, and I grew up in an entrepreneurial household. Wow. Um, my parents have had a, a successful business that they've had since my, I was in my mom's womb. Mm. So they've, that business is 36. And then they've wow. started various other businesses during that time as well. So that's really all my lifestyle was, was entrepreneurship. And, um, and I really saw the, the hustle, the, the beginning stages when things were tough. I've seen them start a lot of businesses and the sacrifice that it takes. And so when I talk to people and they think that all of a sudden, you know, you're just going to have this money, be able to take a salary and, and mm, no, not quite, not right. quite. <laughs> and it's like you said, you have to have enough money to support the business before the business can support you. Absolutely. And so I think that's very wise advice. And I knew you were going to say that. That's why I was like, tell them what you would say. Because there's so many people out here, you know, who are making money off of getting people to put themselves in bad financial situations by quitting their jobs too soon. And, um, and yeah, yeah. And you get all excited and then, honey, you're broke. And then you're struggling. So, so y'all yeah. listen to listen to the wisdom of the woman of God. Just, it's just so you know, you have to stretch yourself for a season, mm -hmm. and 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 be able to balance the two until right. you can get to where. Like I tell people, you got to do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Absolutely, yes, ma'am. Yeah. And I just I. I, I really, I think, you know, once I get a little further in business, I'm definitely going to release something, a book or something to help people understand that. Um, because a lot of times, too, profit is read businesses go through ups and downs. Yes. You know, if you just started the company, you haven't experienced the first wave or the first decrease. And like, if you put that that responsibility on your company that early, I think that's why a lot of people don't make it past five years with their business, wow. you know, because they just, they put too much on the company too soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so true. That's yeah. so true. <clears throat> and that's a big deal to be able to say your business is five years old, is five years old. Uh, and you, and then on top of that, you started in your early twenties. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people who can't sustain a business that long and they're, more mature mentally mm -hmm. um and so it, it it really shows your resilience and your fight and your drive and that it's it ain't no joke y'all entrepreneurship it's is not, not a joke if you think it's about sitting on the beach and <laughs> and, and and you know just sipping <laughs> sipping something uh of the alcoholic persuasion with <laughs> with your work on your laptop like this ain't that this ain't that uh, you know <laughs> no, you could be, you're gonna be in that bonnet <laughs> with that laptop if you got if you can afford a laptop at the beginning <laughs> what <laughs> you might be at the library trying to figure it out so that part yes <laughs> a lot of hard work yes 
So you have a book entitled Get Up and Lead Your 21 Day Guide to an Intentional and Influential Life. I really love that title. Um, Can you please tell us a little bit more about this book and your approach to training leaders? Absolutely. So um, when most people get it, because I'm a pastor, they think that it's all about church stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I probably talk about God one time in that whole book. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and he told me to write it that way because of the people who, uh, would be reading it and stuff like that. So, um, the book is, is centered around understanding leadership as who we are, not as something that we do. Um, I think a lot of times people try to take on like the functionality of leadership without under and see, without first seeing themselves as leaders. So it's the whole thing where it's like, okay, well, I'm going to teach you how to lead a ministry. But a lot of these people that we're teaching how to lead ministries don't know how to lead themselves. Ooh. Or they're not leading in their households. So what Lord. I do, whenever I teach leadership, I start with the person first, helping them to see like, hey, this is not just about a title. This is not just about a role. Leadership is a way of life. When you wake up in the morning, you need to wake up like a leader. You need to move throughout your day like a leader. Whether you're talking to your family at a family reunion or you are at your job presenting something you need to live sleep eat breathe leadership because you're a leader you know so that's what it's all about so the book is very it's almost like a personal development opportunity so it's 21 days just dealing with you um we talk about character because that is something that is one of my jesus christ like i could start i have a whole rant about character the character of leaders like come on in here you know man Yes. So I deal with character, owning it, you know, owning who you are, being proud of who you are. And I even talk about, you know, smaller things like being presentable, knowing how to study and prepare and talk and teach and, you know, present yourself in a, in a, in a way that a leader does. Because those are some life lessons that a lot of people miss out on, you yes. know? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I always tell our leaders, your title does not make you a leader. Mm-hmm. Um, just just because we give you a new title doesn't mean that the people are going to see you as a leader. <laughs> it's about how you were conducting yourself long before we ever gave you that title. That I said, do you know that people will begin to see you as a leader before you're ever promoted? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to promote anyone who people already don't see as a leader. Because wow. as you said, you're not le- you're not living it. If mm-hmm. I'm not living it and I'm not... Uh, holding myself accountable for what I do and what I say and how I handle people Mm -hmm. before the title, what would make me think that they're going to do that after they get a title? Absolutely. And so Mm -hmm. I love that you said that you're dealing with the person Mm -hmm. before you ever worry about the position. Absolutely. That this is a mindset that we have to have. And this is a way of life that you have to have. And you have to understand, too, that as a leader, you cannot live like everyone else lives because you're always an example. Even Absolutely. in your casual time, you're an example. Absolutely. Or looking at you when you're you're chilling, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and, and, and you're giving them permission to do or not do something yeah. by what you model. And so uh, I, I love that. Absolutely love that approach. And y'all, y'all don't even know. Like I'm so mad at Rona because we had plans to bring her to Liberate oh, Church. Yeah. Yes, like we were planning <laughs> our 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 a boot camp, mm-hmm. which usually takes place this month in August. And we had planned to bring you down, to bring you to Dallas, to train, hey, to work oh, with our leaders. And a Rona. <laughs> I mean, we had a list of the different people we're going to bring, and you were on that list. And oh, wow. and as right as we were starting to get ready to send out all the information and see if you were available, all the Rona stuff hit. Oh, so, wow. but we're going to get her to ready. Dallas, Texas, okay? I'm ready to come to Texas. I'm ready to be with my Liberation Fam. <laughs> yes. I mean, because I, I love that uh, your focus first, first and foremost on the person. I feel that there are too many leadership books that talk about uh, leadership behavior. 
Mm -hmm. But I feel that our actions are a result of whatever is on the inside, whatever is our heart. At the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And then whatever you speak, your body follows. Mm -hmm. And wherever your mind goes, your body goes. And so if we don't deal what's internally going on, we're Mm -hmm. never going to really exemplify what a leader should look like. Um, In your experience with training individuals in the area of leadership, what do you feel are the most common challenges that women face in the development into leadership roles? Jesus, okay. <laughs> where, do, where do we start, Providence? <laughs> Here's the thing, like, in my entire experience, I'm gonna be very honest with you, women have been probably the most difficult for me to train. Wow. And that is, it's really, it's really hard um, because a lot of times with women, like we talked about early on, the concept of leadership is so male dominated mm-hmm. that I have to, when I'm training them, I have to pull them out of that mindset and help them even see themselves as a leader. Like you cannot teach somebody how to be something that they don't see themselves as. Yeah. So we have to strip away titles, strip away what society says. We have to strip away all of that and get to the core of them and say, Hey baby, listen, in the book of Genesis, when you were created, God gave you dominion yes. before there was a title, before there was this beautiful church, before it was all these things, God called you and spoke into you to be a leader. Yeah. That is where your foundation comes from. So I have to right. go there with them. Um, also with women too, we struggle with being okay with our voice. And I think men deal with that too. But My for God. women, I feel like we really have a hard time with that. Like finding your own sound and being okay with your sound, you know, and also the confidence things, um, especially if you deal with women like myself, you know, who didn't have their uh, biological father in their life, that I did anything, the affirmation thing, you know, and so with women, I know a a lot of times I have to take them under my wing. It's not as simple as the six-week class, but I got to do some personal building, like texting them every day, like, I love you. You're amazing. You're beautiful. You're powerful. You're the answer to the problem that, you know, a lot of confidence building and stuff like that. So that's a little bit about what I see with women a lot of times. And like I said, they're usually, they're the most difficult. And it's because we're so complex. Mm -hmm. It's so many layers to us. You know, we got so many compartments and stuff. Men are usually real simple. Like, (laughs) (laughs) but we're so complex, but I love it. I I wouldn't trade it for nothing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, everything you said is a million percent the things that I deal with as well. Um, I actually am planning for an episode of my podcast for September to be Finding Your Voice. Wow. So, um, and and, and it's such a powerful thing because I feel that as women, we feel like we need permission. Mm. We need permission to be who God's called us to be. We need permission to be assertive. Uh, one of the things that I've had to deal with a lot of women on, um, I, when I was going through my counseling internship, I was at a domestic violence nonprofit and I would uh, do classes at some of the shelters and we would always have to do lessons on being assertive mm. and how it's not aggressive, it's not passive, it's you having the right to use your voice and to speak your opinion in a stern manner Um, and that's a big, a part of, I think what we as women struggle in is feeling that we have rights, feeling that we have rights. I can't count how many women I have counseled who have gone through different forms of abuse, who have said, I just feel like men can do whatever they want to us. I just feel like my feelings don't matter. I feel like my voice doesn't matter. I feel that my body doesn't even matter that I could be property to someone else and they would have the right and no one would punish them for it. Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, there are so many layers because we have to work through their past. We have to work through their perception. Mm -hmm. Um, We have to work through what have they been indoctrinated with spiritually (laughs) because some spiritually feel like they're, because of what's been taught in church, Mm -hmm. you know, so now we got to deal with even the faith part. Listen, they think Jesus is mad at them. They think Jesus doesn't want them to have a voice. They think God doesn't want them to have a voice. So we have all these, these angles to help them see that, like you said, you have dominion. 
Yes, ma'am. That at, at creation, it wasn't Adam, you have dominion, and then Eve, you might get a little bit. They were both given these instructions. That ain't what he said. That ain't what he said. You might do a little bit, you know, just this little dominion. Don't talk too much now. <laughs> I'm so sick of people saying and doing stuff that Jesus and, and the Lord never said. I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> sick and tired. Sick and tired. <laughs> and, and so we have women who are really, really beat down emotionally and mentally. And, and like you said, you have to love them through it. You have to affirm them. You have to encourage them and really help them put the pieces back together. It's an investment. Yes, it is. But it's worth it. Mm -hmm. It's so, so worth it. Oh, and right. so there are women on this um, on this podcast who you know that you are called to be a leader or you're in a leadership position, but you're having a hard time walking in that. You need to understand that it's more than just taking on a certain behavior mm -hmm. or mimicking your male counterparts, but you really have to go back to the core, the root of the matter, and mm -hmm. find out why is it that you feel that you don't have the right to be there, that you don't have the right or you don't deserve to be there just as much as a man deserves to be there. Mm -hmm. um, that really is something that you have to unpack. Um, were there any um, strong female leaders that have had an impact in your life? Yes. I had a lot of great, strong female leaders. Um, and a lot of them were when I was in school, like my first grade teacher, Miss Glover, I'll never forget that woman for as long as I live. I think that's where I learned to to drive things. Like, no, like you can't just take it at face value, Jessica. You can't just take what's given to you, but drive what you want, drive your desires. Like that's where I learned that from. And she also stretched me. Like I'm in the first grade. She going to get sixth grade books for me. Like that type of thing. Like this girl wants it. I'm going to give it to her. So she really, she really <laughs> helped me understand that as a woman, I didn't have to just accept what was on the table. And it was okay if I was different. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget her. Um, I had two other leaders, um, Dr. Richardson, um, that's where I actually got my editorial stuff from. She let me, you know, start a, a, a Eagles Gazette or some girl, something I came up with when I was in high school. So <laughs> she was buying the newsletter and stuff. Uh, she was extremely powerful in my life. And then also uh, Miss Jones. So I got my start in leadership before I even left high school. And I, those women set the, set the tone for every other woman God allowed me to meet. Um, from that point on, I, I, I don't think I would have been prepared for, to, to meet and encounter other strong women mm -hmm. had it not been for those strong women in my life. I think I would have shunned away from women, wow. um, strong women leadership if it wasn't for them. And then, of course, my mom. Now, now that's my so that, that's that's my captain in command, <laughs> all of that. She trained yeah. straight and narrow. So, yes, yeah. ma'am. That Life is wonderful. Of Mm -hmm. Teachers, it's nothing like a teacher that loves teaching that's really called to it. You hear me? They will change your life. Yes. You'll never forget them. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Never. And so to all the teachers out there, we appreciate you and we pray for you. you. We bless God for you and we cover you as you go back into this new school year. Um, we just thank you for, for your sacrifice and all you do to shape us and to shape our children. Praise yes, God. Yeah. yeah, some teachers have made an, a great impact in my life. I remember there was one, my world geography teacher, her name was Miss mm -hmm. Wyndham, and she used to make her own clothes. She used to have these African head wraps, and she would have matching, the matching like dress, and it'd be globes on it in countries, and she would make up songs for help us to help us remember different things about the world, and I still remember some of this stuff. You had to own Miss Frizzle. You had to own Miss Frizzle. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly how she was. She really Love was. You. She was so awesome. I, everyone loved her. She was just the sweetest person. And um, yeah. but yeah, those songs are still going through my mind. I'm like, well, I'm sitting around talking about Beijing, China, Mongolia, <laughs> <laughs> North and South Korea. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> Miss Wendell, you done taught me some things about the world. Come on. But, yeah, I, I, 
<laughs> yeah, I thank the Lord for her and for mm -hmm. all, like you said, all of the amazing female teachers um, that were great examples to us. Um, yes, what are the top three qualities you feel that every good leader should possess? Just three, huh? <laughs> well, you can give more. You can give more. Um, teachability. Mm. I think leaders have to remain teachable. Yes. Um, especially if you're going to lead anybody, like beside yourself, you have to stay teachable and you have to be flexible, you know, open to growth, open to learning. I'm even thinking about like, you know, um, these businesses, uh, what's, what was that business called? Blockbuster. Uh -huh. You know, I oftentimes yeah. think about blockbusters and I'm like, my kids will never know about them simply because they were not flexible. Right. They were not willing right to adjust to these days and these times and yeah. now Netflix, you know, is everything we need. And, you know, yeah. now uh, they've opened the door to even other, um, even more streaming opportunities and streaming ideas. We got Disney plus and stuff. We will never have to literally go into a building to rent a movie ever again. Nope. And so companies like that remind me like, just you know what you as a leader, you have to stay um, teachable. You have to stay flexible. You have to be willing to adjust. Um, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned as a leader is like um, everybody that you meet, they're not going to be the same. You're going to meet some people who are definitely open and ready to go. Right. But then you're going to meet those that you got to do a little bit more tugging with. For me, I had a one size fit all type of ministry. Like, nope, when you run over here, you better be ready because this is what I got for you. Let's go. But yeah. I had to learn how to be flexible and, and to remain teachable, too. So teachability, flexibility. And the other thing I can't I, I just can't go away from it. The identity thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you could probably attest to this, even as, you know, a mom and stuff like that. If you're not sure who you are, like the, the assignment that you have, the calling that you, it'll make you question who you are. So like, if you, if you're going to lead anybody or lead anything, know who you are. Absolutely. Like, I would, I think those are the top three. Honestly, I think with those three things, you can master everything else. Right. Right. If you know who you are, if you're teachable, if you're flexible, you can, all the other techniques and functionalities of leadership, you, you'll you be good to go if you got those three things. <laughs> that is gold. That is gold. I hope y'all are writing these notes. I hope you are taking some notes because I love, that is absolute gold. I agree with that 100%. Nothing's more frustrating than trying to follow a leader who doesn't know who they are. Because you'll find that they continuously change into something else every few months. Every few People months. don't know where they're going. Like whatever the, however the wind blows today, I'm, I'm with this today and I'm against that today. And then next month I'm with something else and against what I was just with, you know, and, and, and oh, that's, that's one of the key reasons I believe that a lot of churches in the beginning can't keep members because pastors have no identity and the pastors have no clear vision and no direction okay. and so the people become discouraged especially in the beginning when you're having them serve and serve and serve mm -hmm. and you're not seeing any fruit manifest because the leader is mm -hmm. confused about who he is or she is and where they're going and so i absolutely. think absolutely identity is so vital and with that identity i think it will help you to clarify your leadership style Mm -hmm. um, and you won't That's try true. to imitate someone else's leadership style that really isn't who you are. You can't right. imitate them when you haven't been with through what they've gone through and you're not doing what they're doing. You have to have a, a style that's true to you and that is in alignment with your calling and, and who God has prepared and developed you to be. Um, I feel like with me, my leadership style is nece necessary for my calling. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I'm, like we both said we're very transparent people. Mm -hmm. I'm a transparent person because I'm helping people to heal. Yes, ma'am. And so in order for them to be able to heal, I have to be compassionate and vulnerable as well to create a safe space for them to heal. Absolutely. And, and if I was trying to be like someone else, then I might not really 
operate in the the unique qualities that I have that are essential for what I'm called to. And so, like you said, if you if you don't really know who you are, don't don't try to lead anybody just yet. Won't you do some <laughs> some introspection and some self discovery yes, before you start trying to give people instruction on what they need to be doing? You know, and it, I mean, if you already are in a leadership role. Right. You just have to continue to, like she said, be teachable mm-hmm. and, and allow people to help train you, allow God to teach you who you oh, are and, and be very cautious with how you use your authority. Uh, but I think that is some amazing advice. And that flexibility, honey, is coming handy in 2020. Listen here. <laughs> Look, church will never, I don't. Not just church, because I think a lot of emphasis is on the church. Like, oh, yeah, church is different. But careers are different, too. You know, every, I don't think we'll, anything will ever be the same again after this. How our children go to school, how we go to work, how we minister. It'll just never be the same. we Absolutely. got to be flexible. Absolutely. I've mm-hmm. even had to talk to my, my kids and really get them comfortable with the idea that we are creating a new normal. Right. Things are not going to go back to how they were before. The and world is not going to go back to how it was before. So we need to go ahead and get it in our minds and start adjusting to where we're headed. Because, That's honey, good. the past is over. <laughs> Remember the things of the past. God's doing a new thing, okay? <laughs> ain't, ain't it marvelous? <laughs> it's marvelous in our eyes for sure. Because it yes. it's creating, I think, if we look at it the right way, it is opening up a level of freedom that we did not have before. Mm-hmm. Because people's minds are a little bit more receptive to things being done differently. Mm-hmm. And you have never really gotten people at a point where they're as open to change as they are right now. Because they don't have a choice. And so <laughs> this is the time <laughs> to present the you know the wild and crazy stuff the the outside of the box stuff because mm-hmm. i think people are more more receptive to it before they would have said no that's not how we do this mm-hmm. but now they are really more receptive to change and so yeah. those y'all creatives this is your moment you know you better that's shine right. because mm-hmm. this is your time to really use that creativity to to create uh, new avenues to communicate, to worship, to to do business. This is your moment. And I mean, the folks who aren't creative are struggling right now because you've been in, on autopilot mm-hmm. and you're used to doing things a certain way. And now that you're forced to change, uh, those type of people are, are having a hard time. But the creatives like, y'all better take advantage of this season. Y'all better. This is, it. I think that if you're a... Um graphic designer videographer like if you haven't perfected your business like this is the time to do it because yes. after this people are going to be looking for graphic designers uh yes. videographers you know lighting people any yes. any creatives period people are looking for you right now you know right. yes get, get the prices together get your little website Thank together, you. Get, it together. get it together mm-hmm. uh, all of my mentors who mentees who are listening do you hear what the woman of God said? Pastor Jessica said, get it together, priceless it and all together. of that. So get now you together. can't, it wasn't from me, it was from her. <laughs> so now you can see that. I've been, said it. Yeah, get I've it been telling them, y'all prepare. Because mm-hmm. you never know when opportunity will arise and you have to be prepared for it. Absolutely. You know, have your prices together. Like I shouldn't mm-hmm. have to beg you for to give you my money. Come on, No. <laughs> And don't be asking me all these different questions. No, get, you send me your price sheet and let me just pick what I want. I'm like a lot of times people, it's hard to even purchase stuff from people because like, well, what you, what, well, what do you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? Just tell me how yes. much it's going to cost. Yes. Know how much you're charging, you know? Yes. Like, why do you need to know all that? Do you change the prices for each client? I mean, what is going on? What's going on? Help me help, me help you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But this is definitely their time. My mm-hmm. My graphic designers for my company for Keen Vision, they are. I'm. I'm gonna have to find somebody else to work <laughs> alongside them. Cause, and, and this is the time people are writing books out of the wazoo. I thought, I said, oh Lord, this Corona thing. You know, people aren't gonna want to write books anymore. But I have been getting books after. I'm talking about we're we're packed every month. Like we meet our quota every month. We've met our quota every month. 
since we've been in this quarantine. So God be the glory. To God be all the glory. So I'm like, no, if you're a graphic designer, get on your game because we yeah. you're needed. You're needed. Yeah. I'm Amazing. actually working on a book right now. One of our um oh. is an author and an editor. And so she's working with me on that. But I will might I might need to be talking to you about the publishing part. Absolutely. Um, Mm -hmm. But but yeah, like you're right. Everybody is is starting to utilize that stuff that they known they needed to do. Like mm -hmm. I've had this need to put out this book for a couple years now, and I'm <laughs> finally <laughs> pushing it out. Congratulations! Thank ahead of time. So I'm just like Lord, Lord. This <laughs> it's a lot, but you got it. You are so <laughs> packed with like wisdom. I love any chance. I don't know if you were still doing the Friday. Um, morning chats that you were doing live on Facebook. Yeah. Anytime I got the chance to watch them, I was I was just so filled, so encouraged. So Thank you me. need to get that book done because we yes. need it. We need yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, this first one's more challenging for me because mm -hmm. it's also incorporating a bit of like counseling. I'm calling it like your little pocket pastoral counselor. So I love um, it's just it. concerning some things that difficulties we might need to press through and giving you scripture and wisdom and, and some ways to apply that wisdom also through activities of how to work through different things. So um, the first book God gave me was is a little more, you know, deep, I guess. <laughs> but but I'm trying to get in the groove. So maybe every year or two I can put out a new one. So absolutely just pray for me. <laughs> I'm praying for you, y'all. Lift y'all hands to it. So don't be calling her for stuff. Y'all lift y'all hands to it too. Tell her right prophet is re right. Yes. <laughs> In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The anointing of the scribe be released. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful though for uh, mm -hmm. my member Candace who is who is helping me. Um awesome. Also, what would you say, and I always love to hear these answers, uh, is one of the most challenging experiences that you've had as a leader? <laughs> you and these questions, I'm just like. <laughs> Jen, I'm like that's that's so. <laughs> okay, so, you know, what my, my calling is, like, in addition to all the assignments I have, my calling is to potential and maturity. Like, that's my thing. So, for me, it's hard whenever I can see, like, with my eyes, I can see this this individual just becoming this great person. Or you see that they're so gifted, so talented, but they don't see it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Somebody but, give me a thing, blanket and just throw it over me right now. Cause <laughs> because you have, number one, you are definitely pastoral. You have a mentor's heart. I know you can relate to it. It is so hard. Like, unless, I don't think anybody really understands that unless they have that, that, uh, the yeah. anointing, you know, yeah. it's so hard to see that potential on somebody and see all that they could become, yeah. all that they could do, the money that could be hitting their life, yeah. the blessings that could be hitting their family, and yeah. they don't see it. Yeah. I'm like, there's nothing harder than that. I promise Ooh. you it's not. Because it's like, you can keep putting a mirror up to their face. Like, look, do you see this? But because of what life has done to them, even right. the lenses that they view life with and they view themselves with, it's right. blurred. So yeah. it's like, we got to do we got to do a lot of unpacking, a lot of deliverance, yes. a lot of praying, a lot of affirming. Yeah. But to me, that's the most challenging thing. I, it's so, and, and, and I don't even, I don't have like one particular situation where that's happened. It's been all across the board. Like I'll go to my senior pastor who is also my spiritual father and I'll be like, dad, what is going on with this? Like, why won't they do right? Why won't they act right? Why they keep on social media posting these pictures? I'm sick of them. I'm tired of them. I'm done. I ain't doing it no more. And he's like, just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Meet them where they are. Yes. Meet them. I'm like, but they could be all the way over here. He said, but you got to start with them somewhere, you know? Yeah. So I'm even having to learn how to tone it down. You know, I'm a rah, 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 go get them yeah. person, you know? So when you, that, that has been the most challenging part of my leadership journey. That is it. Oh man. Woo -wee. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That is, it's painful. You know, it's painful to see, potential never go past potential you know um and to see people just sitting on something that could transform their lives 
Yeah. And one of my specific callings is I have really the gifting of helping people change their perspective mm -hmm. to see differently. And it's so funny because as I was forming my business, I was going to call it Sheree Eddington International. For the longest, I was saying that. But God said Sheree Eddington Enterprises. And then when I looked at the acronym, it was C. And I'm a prophet and I help people see. Nice. And so it was like everything lined up. Um and, and that's really one of my giftings, even as I was counseling, as I counsel people, is one of the ways I help them get through is by changing the way that they see. So and fun. so having to work with people who cannot see, bless you, themselves beyond where they are mm -hmm. um, and whose sight is just so limited mm -hmm. and so constricted that they just don't know how amazing they are. They, they don't. don't know how gifted they are. And I mean, my husband and I have prophesied to people and we have shown them things specifically with, and given them words of wisdom with direction to the T and they don't do it because they're, they don't see themselves being able right. to do it. And then all of it transpires and they miss the opportunity. Everything we said comes out and they miss the opportunity because they couldn't see. And that's, it's heartbreaking. It's, it's yeah. really frustrating as, as, as you said. Um, but I totally agree with Pastor AD. It's my biggest thing that has helped me to have peace with working with people through counseling or through pastoring mm -hmm. has been to accept yes. where they are. Mm -hmm. and understand that we have to operate in that same grace that God operates with us, that God knows our end point, mm -hmm. but he still does not become impatient with us yeah. as we become able to see where he's taking us. That's and so I try to approach people with that same grace is that I may be able to see where you're headed and what God has for you, but you can't. So I'm going to accept you right where you are. That is so as, good. As AD said, and I am going to teach you how to change the way you see because we all view things through the lenses of our experiences. It, it's a filter mm -hmm. for our eyes. And so based off of what we've been through is going to determine what we see ahead of us. Mm -hmm. But it's our job to take the filter off and say that your future sight is not defined by your past experience. And so now I am going to open you up to the eyes of God and allow you to see beyond what you've experienced and beyond what you know and allow the Holy Spirit to now teach you things that you have not studied, to teach you things that you have not seen or have not experienced so that you can start to see things that you didn't know existed. And and so it is it's it's oh man, I could go on and on and on about that because I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. Like Everything you said was so in line with, with, I don't know. I don't know. We just connected is, somehow. <laughs> and that was a lot of wisdom. Like, I'm, I'm even taking that in as you were talking. Like, yes, that's the thing. Like, helping them understand what they're seeing and how to see. Um, I think that, you know, of course, in leadership, we go through betrayal. We go through heartbreak. We go through giving out all blood, sweat, and tears to people yeah. who turn around and they say the meanest thing Man. to us. You know, we go through all of that, but I promise you, nothing hurts more than someone not being able to see. Yeah. Not being able to see who they are. So all of that, everything that you just shared, I, I'm literally writing it on the tablets of my heart so that as I grow in leadership, I never forget that and how powerful and important that is. So yeah. Yeah, I'm over here drinking too. I'm like, wait a minute, you you supposed to be a part of this. But I'm like, no, she is so right. It's all about what they see. Yeah, it's it's I mean, and and that was something that I didn't realize growing up because I was that type of person that said, if I know this, everybody should know this. <laughs> you know, I was impatient as when I was younger. I was so impatient. I was just like you don't know that? Like, come on. <laughs> come <Duh. in>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and my dad was like, Cherie, everybody doesn't think like you. You're pretty wise for a kid, you know? Okay. Uh, and, and I would just be like, that was stupid. How could you not see that? <laughs> and God just really transformed my heart. You know, when God called me to pastor, I said, you sure? You sure? Yes. 
<laughs> it's just show because I don't know if I got the patience, but he really transformed my heart into a pastoral mm -hmm. heart to be able to have that level of patience and compassion to know that, you know, we all create these social constructs based off of our experiences. So my world doesn't look like your world. Absolutely. The way I understand doesn't look like the doesn't isn't the way you understand. And so I have to start to learn the different personality types to be able to adjust to how people see and understand and comprehend and also understand the boundaries and yes, understand yes. how far I can push them yes. and how much I can challenge yes. them, you know, because there's some personality types. I can teach you how to power your way through your personality for the necessity of whatever task that you're performing. But yes. at the end of the day, it's not your innate ability. Right. You know? Absolutely. You're not naturally inclined to be this way. Now, mm -hmm. I'm an introvert. But I'm a minister, so I have to be, <laughs> I have to have extrovert tendencies, you yes, know. I, <laughs> I have to be willing to be out there and love on people and socialize mm -hmm. and all of that. But then, honey, I'm going home and I'm like, whew, that. No people. Train. No yes, people. I'm trained. <laughs> but I know how to power through it for my purpose. Yes, ma'am. at the same time, I still have to embrace who I naturally am, which is more of an introvert. Mm -hmm. And so as a pastor, yeah, we have to adjust around people's personalities so that we can help them be able to see their potential, mm -hmm. but it be true to who they are and us not trying to make them into a certain personality for mm -hmm. a specific task. Like I got to embrace that. Yeah, you can push yourself to be social, but at the end of the day, that's not their thing. Yeah. You no. Know? Yes, ma'am. And so I, I think that that was great. Um, that's, that's so important for us to understand. And for those of you who are in that place where you're having a hard time seeing what the potential in yourself, um, you really need to connect with some people who are going to be patient with you and work with you to help you become all that you feel like God is purpose for you to become. This is not a journey you can make on your own. It is not. It's just not. And I think that is something a lot of, especially millennials, like our age, I feel like they're still learning that, like, mm -hmm. you can't do everything by yourself. You're going to need a mentor. You're going to need a therapist. You'll need a pastor. You'll need a friend. You know, you're going to need you gonna need all of that if you're going to get through this thing. And I think uh, people forget that that's how God created us. He, yeah. We were created in community to be in community. Yeah. I just think it's so interesting um, how... Like when God created everything else, it was like God said, and it was. God said, and it was. But then when it came to man, he said, let us, you know. Yeah. And I think that that set the pretense for even how he de he desires us to work, how yeah. he desires us to produce, not alone, but with others, with the people yeah. that he created, you know, um, to be around us and stuff like that. So community Absolutely. is so key. You can't do it by yourself. You can't run a business by yourself. Right, you, know, you can't pastor by yourself. You just can't do anything alone. We weren't designed to, you mm -mm, know. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And I think too, we want to be alone because we don't want to have to learn how to deal with folks. You know, oh, you know what? Just just worry about yourself. Just worry about yourself. Don't don't be getting on this live talking about me like that. You didn't even have to do that. <laughs> we could have talked offline. We could have talked offline. <laughs> That's me too, Pastor. That's me too. You know, it's hard navigating various personalities. You're like, I don't even feel like it. <laughs> not you and not today. <laughs> but we got better. We know better now. We know better. I'm working on it. I'm working yes. on it. A work in progress. I was yes. the one that always loved the one-on-one -on -one projects versus the group projects. Like, I, can I work by myself, please? <laughs> Because they don't never do their work anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have one that totally abandons the group. You always. have one that acts like they can't think for themselves. Uh -huh. And you have one that always is fighting you for the leadership role. Uh-huh. I don't want you to lead in no way. Okay? You got it. <laughs> you got it. Okay? <laughs> Every time. How do but I, I always end it. up in the, the lackadaisical group? How do I always end up with these people who don't want to do nothing? 
But on the day of the project, they got everything to say. Come what? on. How did we get here? Sir, I haven't talked to you since we started. Where did you come from? <laughs> you all up here talking about what's my part. Let me get my pa my paper. <laughs> the same part you had throughout these last couple of weeks. Sit down, serve it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the other one. Am I doing it right? <laughs> Should I type it like this? <laughs> Can you think for yourself? Please. <laughs> I got to do the project and affirm you all in the same time. God. <laughs> Thank God that we the You're a project. <laughs> you are the project. <laughs> God has, God has the, done some work. I'm, I'm a witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Well, won't he do it? Yes, man. But the blood. <laughs> but the blood. <laughs> he put me here, y'all. I didn't choose me for this. He put me here. <laughs> I would have picked somebody else for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's hard, you know, when you are a natural leader and you're put in those type of situations because to be a net when you are a natural leader, you're not always the most patient person, you mm -hmm. know, because you have to be driven. You have to be someone who is willing to to plow. And when you have people that don't want to move and that are, you know, making things take longer and you just you ready to just kick them off the train all together and just say, I got this. <laughs> I'll do it by myself. Yeah. <laughs> God really has to work with me on that. Like just to know, like you can't keep kicking people out the way just because they ain't doing the thing right. You know, yeah. see it from their way. And it also helped them to see, you know, your way too. Yes. And don't forget, daughter, this is an assignment because of what I placed on the inside of you. So be patient. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So mm -hmm. those of you who are female leaders, who are natural born leaders, that is something that we're always having to work on is patience yeah. and compassion and, you know, treat people the way we want to be treated because you can be so vision focused and so forward focused that you don't take the necessary precautions with people's feelings mm -hmm. uh, as much as you should. So we definitely have to learn that uh, we have to take that extra step to teach people along the way, to develop people, to give them the opportunity to share the load Yes, Some of us end up in burnout because of that. <laughs> we don't want to take the time to teach them. Man, and the time took me to teach them, I could have just done it myself. And so we do everything, and now we're tired and we're worn out because we didn't want to just teach someone else to do it, even if they can do it as like we do it. Exactly. You may not do it like we do it, but you have to delegate. You Absolutely. have to delegate. A real leader is developing people. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we mistake leadership for doing it all ourselves. But no, a leader should be developing people. So yeah. sometimes it'll take a little longer than you want. It may not turn out exactly like you want, but you have to develop people. Yeah. Um, oh, man, we're almost out of time. This flew by so fast. It did. Um, That's why I didn't dig into that topic because I'm like, ooh, just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, because it could have just kept going. We could have kept going on that. Uh, what do you feel, who or what do you feel have developed you the most as a leader? Um, I would I would definitely give that to my leader, my leader, Pastor Adrian Davis, um, because I that's, that's where I've grown the most. That's where I've had the most opportunity um, to lead. You know, when I first met him, I was a uh, unsaved, you know, probably just left the club that day, you know, might have, you know, rolled up some, ain't no telling what condition I was in, I'm being <laughs> serious, you know, um, 23, 24 years old. And, you know, he saw something in me way more than I saw it myself. I just wanted to teach and retire in, in, in like 20 some years. Um, but he gave me the opportunity to de develop our children's department and, and, you know, even from there walking me through it because I knew the world's way of handling things. I didn't know nothing about no kingdom stuff, like how to love on people and be graceful. And I'm an introvert as well. I've grown out of it, but I was very introverted at the church. <laughs> and, you know, but it's still giving me chances, still giving me the opportunity to grow, taking me along um, by the hand and saying, this is how you handle this type of issue. This is how you handle this type of person, teaching me how to love people um, and also teaching me how to be a leader. So going from being a 
a volunteer to the children's church director to now being his right hand, his number two, you know, it's, I'm eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful. He has developed me and given me the opportunity to grow. And even when I made mistakes, he didn't shun me or sit me down. And then like, no, he's like, uh, you gonna cry and get your butt up? Come on, let's keep going. You know, so I'm, I'm very, very grateful for him. And he has, he has played such a major part of my life as, you know, becoming a leader that I am today. That I'm is choking wonderful. up a little bit thinking about oh, it, but yeah. So I great. love it. I absolutely love it. And to think that you went from, like you said, being unsaved, not just, mm-hmm. you know, some people, they say, well, I don't have a lot of ministry. No, you, you, you were just getting to know Jesus and he mm-hmm. really helped disciple you and then train you and then grow mm-hmm. you and just went through all of these various stages. That really is uh, the epitome of sonship because Damn. he helped birth you um, mm-hmm. into your spiritual call. And so that is a beautiful thing. And I think that's something that everyone needs to have in their life. Someone who is willing to invest that time and energy and love people through all of that stuff to mm-hmm. help them reach their not even full potential because you still have so much left mm-hmm. in you to do, but just to place you on the path of potential. Yes, to get you going into that direction of purpose, you know, mm-hmm. um, is is amazing. And so that that be encouraged for those of you who yes. feel that you're not where you need to be. You have time. God will grow you. God will transform you. I'm a living witness. I always tell people, you know, I was not raised in church. We went to church every once in a while. Um, I knew God because my mom read her Bible. I started reading my Bible and going to church with my cousins and stuff. But I had disqualified myself because I didn't have that. I was raised in church background. You know, I thought I had to be in church three, four times a week. You know, I had to be like a PK to really be called to this thing, you know. And, And God loves using the people that, you know, will puzzle everyone else (laughs) he takes the foolish things to confound the wise yes he does oh and so i'm thankful that he still used me (laughs) and i a lot of times and and my husband he was a grand pk and he told Mm -hmm. me he said you don't understand how good you have it you don't have the the bondage of religiousness to deal with he said you you had the opportunity to learn god without all of that stuff yes ma'am that's a blessing. Yes, it is. And I tell people that all the time. Like, I I grew up going to church and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. mama making you stand down there and do the Easter speech, all the other speeches and stuff. But I nobody taught me God. Mm-hmm. Only thing I knew about him was you don't want to make him mad. Like, he was wow. just a big person. You go to him when you need some, and you stay out his way when you do some bad. Like, that's <laughs> all I knew about God. But, you know, 23, 24 years old, I learned who God was. And you know, some prophets read, I come in contact with a lot of PKs and, you know, people who've been in church way longer than I've been alive. You know, people, even people my age who've just been in church for a long time, they have this air. And I used to feel so uh, like lacking in confidence. Like I can't talk about God in front of them because they know, they know him, know him. They've been with him for a long time. But God told me something. He said, just because they know of me don't mean they know me. That part. You, you got a relationship with me. I got a I got a thing with God that even though we're not even we we're, we're not even in a building, I don't need a building because yes. I got him. I know him. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it don't matter if you been saved for a year or what you you can't allow that to make you feel confident about your calling. You know what I'm yes. saying? And I'm just grateful to know him for myself. Oof. Like all these yes. things that religious put on I don't Girl, I yeah. could I could care less. Like you can miss me with, and I respect all of it—the college, every, all of this kind of stuff. But you can't take the fact from me that I know my God. Absolutely. I know Him. I know that He is love. Yes. I know that He is light. I know that He is a redeemer. I know that He is a restore. I know Him. Yes, you know what I'm saying. You better preach on here. I, I, that thing gets me emotional. I don't gotta yeah. have no title. None of that prophecy. Yeah, so even yeah. for the people who are on here now, like. Don't let your time or, or, or the space that you are in God right now um, make you feel like your calling is insignificant or not important. You know, I, I, 
and, and I might be getting all over the place, but I just feel like a lot of people do that to people sometimes. You know, they make you feel like you can't do certain things in church if you don't got your oohs and your ahs right and you don't, you don't have the title and you don't have the family yes. that you can do and work and be for God, but you can't. Yes, you absolutely. You yes, know? 100%. Yes, you are spot on it. Um, uh, like, like you just said, I mean, like I did, people disqualify themselves. Yes. Because we have these religious standards that have shown us what you have to look like and what your past has to look like and what yeah. you have to act like to be able to walk and to fulfill the requirements of this role. But what they don't tell you is that those are man-made requirements. They're not God's requirements. Never would. They never tell us that, you know. <laughs> they make us feel like it's from God, but it's not. It's their requirements. And most of them don't meet them either. Mm -mm. Just like Jesus said, you put weights on people's shoulders that you won't so much as move it with a finger. Like you can't bear your own, the weight that you put on other people. Could it? And that's what really changed my perspective. When I sat back and looked and I said, the people who are being critical and mm -hmm. judgmental towards everyone else isn't doing the things that they, they aren't meeting the standards that they're placing on everyone else. They're not. They're not. Mm -hmm. and, and that freed me because I started mm -hmm. to say, okay, so none of us meet the mark, which is why there's Jesus, which is why there's grace, because we all miss the mark. Yes. But see, the difference between you and me is that I'm honest about it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, ma'am. I'll talk to you later. You're honest about it. You <laughs> I had people tell me all the time, just you shouldn't tell people that you had your son out of wedlock like that you were 19 years old when you got pregnant you shouldn't tell people that you used to have a smoking addiction you used to go to the club and you stuff with fornication why, why, why not why not how else they gonna know that that that, that jesus lives Come and that he's on. still working he's still yes. doing stuff right now i promise you if people knew for real for real they'd be like why is this why am i listening to this girl up here <laughs> preaching on sundays who is this woman people have literally told me stop telling that part of your story i'm like but what but what about where they are what what if God allowed me to live through that just so that they can know that they can too? Yes. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real about mine, be honest. Come you on. Know, I gotta tell the truth. And, and you know the Bible tells us in Revelation that the the that they overcame yes. the accuser by the blood of the lamb and the word and of their testimony. testimony. Yes. And and what people don't understand is when I tell people all the time, when you say silent. You steal God's glory. You steal his you glory. You have no right to steal his glory. He brought you through to bring glory to himself, that he yes. may be exalted. Yes. But you are not giving him that opportunity because you are too worried about what people are going to say. Mm -hmm. Like, really? Why did he spare your life? Why did he transform your life? Why did he snatch you out of darkness? Why did he heal you if you're going to be quiet about it? What is the point? You know, and... It really discourages, I mean, I get so frustrated with believers mm -hmm. who are afraid to share the goodness of God. You're a believer and you don't want to tell people how amazing God is. You don't want somebody else to be healed like you were healed. So if you had the knowledge of the cure of cancer and, and you were healed with it, but you weren't going to tell anybody else. You, you're sitting there looking at folks dying. You, you got people in your family dying of cancer. You got people around you dying of cancer. But you're not going to tell anybody because you didn't want nobody to know you had cancer. Jesus. This is how Isn't we that live. Crazy that, sounds? that sounds so crazy. Like if I say it like that, they'll say that's so crazy. It's but that's thing. what you're doing. Uh -huh. That's exactly what you're doing. I don't want nobody to know my business, but you're not that anymore. So what's the what? What does this matter? They can't kill you with nothing you're free from. They just come can't. on. They can't come kill. on. And what people don't understand is whatever remains in the dark, the kingdom of darkness has authority over it. Uh huh. The only way you can truly start to exercise your authority is by bringing it to the light. Yes. And this is why you're dealing with guilt. This is why you're dealing with shame. This is why you're being harassed by the enemy. This is why you can't sleep. This is why you have anxiety and you got depression because you have all these secrets. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is tormenting you because it's in the dark. 
But yes, the I moment can. you begin and see, and I've come to find that this is why a lot of people will even leave church because Christ is light. Yes, and the closer you get to him, the more he illuminates your life. And he starts to reveal things in your life that you don't want nobody to know. And so you flee. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, if you keep going to the light, it may be uncomfortable being exposed, but he's going to cover you. Yes. He's going to cover you with compassion. He's going to cover you with love. And even the few people that may judge you, it's going to be even more people that are blessed by it and that come yeah. to your defense. Mm -hmm. So let that be changed because of what you said. Yes. Because of what you went through. Yes. 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 So those of you who are listening and you're, you're going through something secretly or you've been through something and God has brought you out of it. You know, I pray that you develop the courage and the boldness mm -hmm. to testify of God's goodness. Let him be glorified, exalt him so that men may be drawn to him. Yes. You have to lift him up. Through your testimony. You talking about, oh, I wish this person would change. I wish they would get saved. I wish you would talk. I wish you would start testifying so they could see how, how good God is and the power that he has to save them. Maybe they might get saved if you would start to talk about what you've been through and what God's done in your life. So, and I don't, we just took a whole nother turn. But you I'm know sorry. what? <laughs> that was God. That, that was, was God. I felt God all in that. And I really feel that women who are listening to your story need to know that though you are a young woman, that's an executive pastor, that's a business owner, that's a mom, a single mom doing it, that you've been through some things. Yes, ma'am. Because people love to, to assume that if you're successful at a young age that you might not have been through anything. Mm -hmm. They sure do. <laughs> and so I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I, I think that's going to encourage somebody who is listening. So as we prepare to close, um, I just wanted you to just talk to the, the listeners and give uh, any word of encouragement that you have to, to the women listening who are full of potential uh, that everyone else sees, but that she cannot see in herself so that she can arise and lead. Yes, ma'am. First of all, I this has just been amazing. This has been a, encouraging. It's been uplifting. And I hope that for all of the ladies who are watching right now, I pray that this has helped you in some way. Um, if I could leave you with anything, um, I know as you've heard, you know, my story, even um, throughout this podcast series, you probably heard prophetess read stories and stuff. Um, and sometimes we can take what people say in their success stories and and we can almost compare ourselves to it and feel like we don't know where we can start or we don't know if we can do all that if i could tell you anything today it would just be to start where you are you don't have to go and try to buy everything that you need today you don't have to try to go buy the llc or buy the business or quit your job or whatever but start with where you are right now whatever it is that god has given you whatever is in your hands whatever is within your reach, start with that and allow that to take you the rest of the way. Even when it comes to your own personal development, start with where you are right now. Be real about where you are right now. And I'm, my prayer is that God will send the people um, into your life who will help you along the way. But I think a lot of what God is waiting on for a lot of you is for you to start where you are. I believe that once you start where you are, he'll start putting the other pieces there. He'll start sending the support, sending the help, sending the resources. But you got to start. You got to take that first step. So that would be the encouragement I give. Like I said, I'm, this has been amazing. I hope you guys have been blessed by this too. I've been yes, blessed. yes, yes, yes. Start where you are. I literally told a mentee the other day, use what's in your hand. Like mm -hmm. you have God has put so much there. You don't have mm -hmm. to go out, like you said, do spend all this money. Use what you have mm -hmm. and, and allow God to grow you. Allow yes. God to open up doors. So that is an amazing, amazing uh, last statement to end this broadcast on. I could talk for her even longer, y'all, but y'all wouldn't listen to a two-hour podcast. So. <laughs> they gotta watch their other podcast. They gotta watch right. Insecure, whatever they watching now. Right. <laughs> Right. So I have to end it here, but I'm definitely going to have to invite you back um, so we can right. have some other discussions because 
Uh, this was awesome. I really, really enjoyed it. And um, I pray that someone was uh, uh, encouraged and empowered and, in, and your life was enriched in some way on today because, I mean, we covered a, a variety of topics. Mm -hmm. So you had to grab a few little nuggets. Um, and if you missed it, go back and listen to it again, okay? <laughs> but I just want to give a big, big thank you to you, Pastor Jessica. I really, really appreciate you more than you know. Um, I thank God for connecting us, even if it was in the eye way of us taking the same ride to the, to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> right. But but I really appreciate you. And um, I know you have a busy schedule. So uh, you took this time out to pour into other women. And that is very valuable, especially in the time where we are, where people are stepping over others and, and not wanting to tell anyone anything to help them. They Everybody feels like they have to hoard uh, information. And so you took that time to be transparent and pour out. And I appreciate you. Um, for all of you who are listening, who are, who are subscribers, who are followers of this podcast, I thank you so much. For those of you who are new listeners, new subscribers and followers, I appreciate you and welcome to the Peace Square Squad. And uh, I just look forward to talking to you again on next Tuesday. If you haven't already, please make sure that you're connected. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Cherie Eddington. Follow the Pretty and Powerful podcast on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Audio Boom. I'm in the process of getting it on Apple Podcasts as well. And don't forget to connect with me per personally, uh, <laughs> personally on Facebook and IG at I am Cherie Eddington. And please don't forget, ladies, you have have the right to be both pretty and powerful so don't just walk in it honey strut in it i'll see you next tuesday you have a blessed week bye-bye